is Sarita at Vine Me Up, and you are sipping in the swirl suite. I'm Leslie Frelo with Vino 301, and you are sipping in the swirl suite. This is Tanisha, Girl Meets Glass, and I'm sipping in the swirl suite. I'm glad to swirl suite, everybody. You are we are in back. The swirl we are suite. back in our perspective and corners. At- and we have Glennis and Leslie with us today. How y'all doing? Hey. Hello, hello. <laughs> How was y'all I'm Thanksgiving? How was your Thanksgiving? It was good. Yeah. It was so it was relaxing. Mhm. And um believe it or not, I did nothing for the whole weekend. What? Yes. This is this is my wow. so I had um mm-hmm. dinner with family and that was great and love them what have you. Um but this is the biggest thing I did. I binge watch Insecure both seasons. <gasps> Saturday. So Wait. I am finally caught up with black people. <laughs> Wait, Welcome so you, the Black People Club. Thank you. So wait, you had Happy never year. you had never seen an episode? No. Oh I had never seen it. I mm. had just heard like you know, I listened to Yes Girl and so I hear their recap weekly mm-hmm. and I was like, Oh, this sounds so good. And so I finally because I am cheap, I do not have HBO, <laughs> but my mother does. Me and so I watched the whole thing at my mom's house. Wow. 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 Glennis, how was well, your Thanksgiving? Well, Thanksgiving was marvelous. Um, I was in the country. I rode a ATV with a 12-year-old driving, my cousin. Wow. And we rode around on my um, family's land and... He was trying to be slick. He hit a couple of bumps, and he knew I was like, okay, little boy. <laughs> <laughs> if I fall off. You don't I'm even want to know what's going to happen to him if you right. fall. <laughs> Had me going under trees. I was like, why well, I'm ducking like I'm 10 feet tall. But anyway. <laughs> so that was fun. That's the food. I didn't drink as much wine as I would have liked to because, okay. you know, when you go down south, they a little religious. Oh, okay. Oh, so, okay. Oh, it was kind of dry. Ah, thanks okay. For being on the water. <laughs> okay. So I'll, I'll make up for it now. Got it. And that other voice you hear is Brie Books. She has come back to join us to talk about Gabrielle Union's book. We are gonna need more wine. Say hey, Brie. Oh. Hello. Hi, everyone. This is Brianna. Hi, Brie. <laughs> hey, Brie. How was your Thanksgiving, <laughs> Brianna? It was great. So um, I went and visited a boyfriend, which was, Uh, I know, right? (laughs) right, So now we need real details. So where is he at? Look, we're going to need more wine. Uh, Uh, (laughs) Wait a minute. Is this an after dark episode? Mm. So do we need to change the topic, Rita? Hmm. Uh, Since the wine's Oh, okay. Oh, she sipped oh, some, some wine on it. So, okay. So, let me yes, ask this please. question: Is it? Did you just visit the boyfriend, or you visit the boyfriend and his family? No, please, let, right? let me let me restate this and kind of legitimize it. This was my second Thanksgiving with him and his family. Oh, oh. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry, I should have put some context in okay. there. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. So I I was out in the Bay Area and just always I always just enjoy being around him and his family and you know just watching them interact and watching them be thankful mm-hmm. for each other and it was it was always a good time mm-hmm. and for his it was actually his birthday weekend and yeah. I was like you know what it's your birthday you deserve nice things I took him to get his first pedicure <gasps> and when oh, I tell you oh, a good girlfriend oh that's wifey right there <laughs> right <laughs> yeah so sick <laughs> it was like his life was changed he was like my feet haven't been this soft since I was a child, Brianna. Since I was a toddler. It was amazing. And he was squirming in the chair and giggling. I'll send you guys pictures. Oh I had to, you know, for posterity, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a really great Thanksgiving. Um, what did I eat? Well, his family, they're not super intense drinkers. So I said, um, this bottle yes. of wine is for me. Uh, but... <laughs> He is in the Bay Area, and so I had access to so many just delicious, mm-hmm. like, Santa Clara Reds, and everything was so tasty. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, no, it was really good, low-key, um, fun, 
a holiday, and then I took a red eye back to New York, and it was like it never happened. Mm. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, that's so great. Bree, does he live? I know his family lives out there. So does he live out there as well? Yes, he does, and that's that's funny about it. I make him up, you know, like my girlfriend who lives in Canada. I'm like, my boyfriend who lives in California. <laughs> real. I'm not just being like catfished epically. <laughs> Wait, so this is your second Thanksgiving. So you guys have been what together for how long? Long distance for about two and a half years. Uh-huh. He does live out there, but um, we actually just had that a really good conversation. And it's not to jinx anything, but it looks like 2018 is going to be amazing. All right. Uh-huh. Oh. I'm so glad I popped some popcorn for this episode. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh my and Serena, how was your Thanksgiving? It yeah. was good. It was low key. So my highlight was apple pie. I don't know how y'all feel about apple pie, but so listen, me and my family, Love- we are we aren't bakers. Oh. So we got our apple pie from Wegmans. Now check this out. Double, okay. They call it a double crust apple pie, okay? So you got the crust on the bottom, and you got the filling with all the apples and everything, but they put one flaky crust on top, okay? And then add another flaky crust on top. Oh, so it is literally two crusts apple pie. That's almost like a cobbler. Oh, my God. So good. Yeah. And they put a little heart in the middle so you can see the, like, apple center. Oh, my God. It was so good. It was so good. Did you have ice cream with Yes, it? of course. Of course. Of course. And what's funnier is Alan had, he really wanted a pie like a week before Thanksgiving. And I was like, so listen, they're not selling. Wegmans is not selling like one, one slice pies. I'm going to have to get the whole thing. He was like, all right, fine. So I brought home a whole, he ate the entire pie by himself that week. And then <laughs> ate more pie on thanksgiving that's how good this pie was that's all i'm saying that's all i'm saying yeah wow. so shout out to apple pie shout out to wegmans my god <laughs> i love like wegmans it. Okay, so that's, like it. that's a commercial tip for wegmans exactly yeah if mr wegmans is listening listen it's a very successful please company give us too. a call <laughs> yes yeah Hashtag and wegmans. they have a wine shop pause okay i'm gonna do some social media magic stand by mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna sponsor you guys there you go there you go there you go i can't see brianna you can't see her we can see her okay I can. good good okay. i can't see oh, okay. it. okay it's just the avatar i'm oh. on my ipad oh, oh. but I, I can see you okay good so so we are talking gabrielle unions we're gonna need more wine so I want to okay. I want to ask this before we get into the details of the book. Um, how do you feel? How did you feel about Gabrielle Union before the book, and how do you feel ab- about her after the book? Um, Are you talking to Brianna? I'm talking oh, to all y'all. Yeah, I'm talking to all I'll, y'all. I'll, you go okay, first. Brianna, you go first, and then I'll go. <laughs> okay. So before I discovered. Um, we're going to need more wine. To me, Gabrielle Union was always the the actress who was always on the tip of my tongue the entire times I've known movies. Mm-hmm. You know, so from the when I was coming of age, you know, there was Deliver Us from Eva. You know, mm-hmm. Bring It On, which is just such a, a a cult classic at this point. She was always an actress who was on my radar, and she's she was one of the first actresses who I consistently remember thinking about her. Mm-hmm. I wish I could see her more often. Mm-hmm. You know, I was I would think I just I don't I want to see her more than twice a year in a movie. Mm-hmm. And right around that time is when Mary Jane um, mm-hmm. showed up on the scene. And when I tell you, I feel like I'm so grateful that she took her acting out of only film, yes. and that we got to see like the different depths of her and her mm-hmm. creativity as an actress. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of how I felt about Gabrielle Union before reading this book, you know, just mm-hmm. generally good feelings. Mm-hmm. And afterwards, I was like, you, madam, mm-hmm. are like snaps, like all of the roses. You need all of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, my, my opinion only became stronger and and just more firm in the fact that 
you know, she really draws from experience. You think oh, of all yeah. the things she's went through, all the different mm-hmm. kind of people she's known. Mm-hmm. She's known stuck right. up rich people. She's known, you know, like poor black people. Like she really kind of draws on that real lived experience. And after reading this book, I was like, you can have nice things. Okay. I, I, I would like for you to have nice things. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> and Leslie, what about you? Um. So before reading the book, I was a fan, um, but not necessarily an admirer Mm -hmm. and I had um because it was just something about maybe it was just the characters that she played Mm -hmm. just rubbed me the wrong way sure and Mm -hmm. then um when I saw um Essence uh the women in film Mm -hmm. that Essence does on an annual basis and she received the award and she did her um famous mean girl speech Mm -hmm. I was like okay Second, you know, I have an appreciation. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to give her a second chance and, mm-hmm. and had a newfound respect for her. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and, and I like um, being Mary Jane mm-hmm. because the show touched on um, topics that we normally don't talk about in the mm-hmm. black community. Yeah. And um, I appreciated that. And then just the camaraderie amongst her colleagues and how um, they, you know, stuck together especially yeah. during those negotiations and then I read read the book mm-hmm. I, I did a book so I okay. listened to it mm-hmm. and um and I just wanted to give her a hug afterwards mm-hmm. I just want to like mm-hmm. say really it is okay mm-hmm. like she she definitely has had a number of experiences in her life but I just I still feel that um and I appreciate her vulnerability mm-hmm. but I just feel like you know she's wounded mm. and mm. you just want to just hug her and say girlfriend it is okay mm-hmm. you know you can yeah. you can um drop your guard which she did in the mm-hmm. book but yeah. it just it just seems like you just need to take it to mm-hmm. just one more level. yeah um I think mean, for me um I was not the biggest Gabrielle Union fan before being Mary Jane. Um, It was being Mary Jane that put me over that ledge because I just thought like her movies and everything were just mediocre. Maybe she didn't shine bright enough. I don't really know. But I just equated her with mediocre acting before being Mary Jane. And that's when I started to see her talent come through like, oh girl, you really can act. Girl, you can really lay your edges. Thank God. Thank God. I'm glad. (laughs) Oh, man. But after reading the book, it's like, oh, okay. It wasn't all your fault sometimes. Okay. So it wasn't up to you the way you had your hair. Got it. Got it. But um, uh, being Mary Jane, it it, it made me a Gabrielle Union fan. That was the reason why I decided to get the book. And um, I'm nosy. So I like to know stories about people's lives. So that's why I read it. (laughs) Uh, Glittis, I know you didn't read the book, but do you have any thoughts about Gabrielle Union so far? You know, it's interesting because I'm really a spectator here, really sitting here eating my popcorn, like watching out <laughs> and trying to be part. So it's like, oh, so this is perfect. Um, there are several things. Well, Gabrielle Union, uh, I was kind of indifferent. I was like, okay, she's another uh, actress and it is what it is. You know, mm-hmm. I, I didn't have... Uh, a reaction either way, whether mm-hmm. I liked her or mm-hmm. not. Um, one movie that I did, um, kind of say that she did a good job to me was in Bad Boys. Oh yeah, when sure. Yeah, sure mm-hmm. Marvin Lawrence's yeah. Um, yeah. Um, sister, mm-hmm. and then her and Will had their yeah. little fling, and yeah. tell Marlon. So I thought they did a good job yeah. with that. And You're in, right in that character when mm-hmm. she played the CIA agent yeah. or the FBI agent, whichever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that was really good. Um, now, as far as the book, I haven't read the book. I just mm. hope it's a, a lot better than Vanilla Pudding. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it is. It's much better than Vanilla Pudding. What's <gasps> what's what's Vanilla yeah. Pudding? And the thing is, Glenda, she didn't mention Vanilla Pudding. It's... Wait, no, she did mention it once. But her favorite um, wine is Malbec. So I was like, well, thank God. All right. All right. Now we're, we're getting somewhere. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Oh. Talk, and which, can we talk about that for a second? Please, please. So if okay, so Wait, oh, so, please. so in the book, Gabrielle Union says that her favorite wine is Malbec, mm-hmm. and you have feels about that. Well, it's because she had 
promoted this wine. Wine. Called it Vanilla Pudding. Vanilla Pudding. And P-U-T-I-N. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was, was it a, um, was it a Chardonnay? Chardonnay. It's a Chardonnay, girl. It's yeah. downstairs. Chardonnay. I did a blog post on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It it's a With- Chardonnay that is overly flavored with vanilla. With vanilla. Mm-hmm. And it is, yeah. it is, um, I think this is allegedly reportedly, <laughs> it um, is overly flavored to cater to a certain demographic, black folks, exactly. who like flavored wine. Mm-hmm. But um, it was not a good decision. She should not, she, I'm quite sure if she is a mile back person. put her name to it. She should not have put her name to it at all. And if she wanted to promote a wine, because obviously throughout the book she enjoys wine, mm-hmm. why did she do a Malbec? Yeah. Why right. did she do a red well, blend? Didn't her, didn't her husband do a Malbec? Well, he has wine, yeah. Like, he has wine, a high-end high wine. High I haven't yeah. tried it. Yeah, yeah. I, can't even, I can't even it's find it. high-end wine. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, right. on her Snapchat, um, because her Snapchat is is <laughs> is lit. So on her Snapchat, they don't really celebrate Thanksgiving. So they had like a big family dinner um, the Saturday, I think the Friday or Saturday after Thanksgiving. But anyway, she sort of um, scanned all the wines that they were drinking. Of course, his was up there, but hers was nowhere to be found. I'm like, oh, oh you don't even like, you don't like your own wine. Got it. All right. Right. Got it. So wow. Brianna, you have to read my. Because it was the it was titled "Not Your Typical Chardonnay," mm. and I was trying Ooh. to be very diplomatic mm-hmm. in my review of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice! Yeah. I cannot wait to check that out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> diplomatic, look at you, bro. And if you would like to um, try, a <laughs> did you get there? I will send you um, a bottle of the vanilla pudding. <laughs> but you said put in p u t t i n d d. No, p u d d i n. We can't even get a G on it. No boo boo. No. no boo-boo. We can't even get a G. I can't. No. No. I'm, I'm good. I'm really good. This is a hard pass. <laughs> um. So I feel I I feel attacked no. right now. This yeah. It's bad. it's yeah. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Um. So I'm gonna bring this first. I'm gonna bring this up first because this is the first thing I thought after I read the book. What do you think about her description of her and Dwayne's relationship? And were you disappointed that they didn't bring up the break and the break baby? Break and the break baby. Oh, I'm glad I got five points. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. Me too. And I thought, well, maybe this will be the sequel. Mm-hmm. Like, you need another book? Mm-mm. This would be a good sequel. Mm-hmm. Because the way, if, if you did not know, and say you landed on planet Earth, mm-hmm. you would have no idea that there was another baby. Mm-hmm. And um, and there was a break. Mm-hmm. Be- because she doesn't mention the other baby at all in the book. She just mentions um, all of Dwayne's kids. Mm-hmm. And um, nephews that he adopted, mm-hmm. and that they, that, you know, this is her best friend and her soulmate. So I was surprised that that was an omission. Wait, 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 wait. So y'all got the Phyllis is the M. What other baby? <laughs> <laughs> so they had a break. I don't know what at what point in their relationship they had this break, right. but they had oh. a break. And then uh, he went and slept with someone, and I don't know right. I who or what, that. but okay. then there was a baby after the break. Yes, yeah, so, mm. yeah, break baby. Um, yeah. no, it, no, it wasn't mentioned. Um, Bree, any thoughts? Were you waiting for the break baby story? I was wondering if it was going to be, like, a chapter about challenges or something. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, not a baby is a challenge That's by any good. stretch, but... I was thinking that, you know, maybe it'd be slipped in. Oh, you know, we had a bonus baby or, you know, and mm. then you know, life just worked out and we got, you, you know, I was thinking mm-hmm. that if it were brought up, it'd be in a positive way, mm-hmm. but it wasn't brought up at all. So, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But, you know, the sad piece about this part of the conversation is, is I don't know if she said this in her book, but she has been 
trying to conceive mm-hmm. yes. um, through, mm-hmm. I think, yeah. uh, I guess, in vitro fertilization mm-hmm. with them. And it has not, there's been several miscarriages. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's sad. Yeah. That's that sad. was, um, that, okay. So we can scroll down since you brought that up, Gladys, we can scroll down to the, the chapter that is, um, stay out my pussy, I believe. Is, yes, is that, yes, that was it. So I, so I want to pose a question to the group. So in this, Let me in this, my phone <laughs> and order this on, on, um, order right <laughs> one chapter name and then off to the races. Exactly. Yeah, it's actually a great book. <laughs> it's a, it's yeah, it's a pretty good book. But mm-hmm. so in this chapter, Glenda, she's talking about how there was, um, there was a rumor that she was pregnant, and um. Mm-hmm. She went to the mm-hmm. doctor for something else. I think her knee or hip or something else. And the staff at the doctor's office didn't believe that she was not pregnant. So they were trying to give her all these alternative methods, you know, to protect the baby as if she was pregnant. And she had to keep saying, hey, I'm not pregnant. Nah, I'm not pregnant. That on top of, you know, people keep asking, wow. um, do you know, do you want kids or why don't you have kids or all these questions about kids, not knowing that she had had her eighth or ninth miscarriage, which she said in the book that she lost count. Cause she's had so many IVF right. treatments. I mean, she, they come from money. They could pay all the money, but it just wasn't working. So, right. and then, so she said that she tried to turn it around on people and say stuff like, well, Hey, have you asked my husband has, does he want kids or, you know, that kind of thing What that never works. So, just all her challenges and a lot of challenges that we all have, I know at this age, right. Um, right? who don't have kids, how people feel like they have that right to just sort of, you know, invade make your privacy. Make assumptions about Right, them. make, your, make you. assumptions, invi- invade your privacy, like, because you don't have children. They feel like they have the right to ask. So I wanted to um, ask you guys what your thoughts about that subject is. Oh, my gosh. I, I'm so glad you brought this up because if have any of you, and I know we're not talking about Tracy Ellis Mm -hmm. Ross, Mm -hmm. but the subject, she just did a documentary. She was talking to young girls and she was talking about how, um, women who are married and have children kind of talk to you as if when you get a certain age, like, Oh, you don't have any kids, you know, Mm kind of placating to you. Mm-hmm. And she really hit the nail on the head. No one else should define you. There's a, cho- a choice that you did not make, mm-hmm. that that you chose not to make. You right. didn't have kids because you decided to make sure your career was all mm-hmm. um, secure. And you know, right. And by the time it, you get around to, it, you're like, well, maybe I really don't want kids. You know. Mm-hmm. And to me, it's a personal decision. I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. Eggs are hard ball. It's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. My life is still fine. Mm-hmm. I am not, I'm not trying to knock anybody else, mm-hmm. but I am not gay. I'm good. Mm-hmm. Not married without children. I'm fine. Mm-hmm. I love coming in this house, eating popcorn, sitting in my bed, talking to y'all on Squirrel Street, drinking what I want to <laughs> drink, and I don't get nothing else. <laughs> good. <laughs> and thank you. Have it. I love it. Well, I, I could completely relate um because um you know as you guys know I was married Mm -hmm. and um my um, ex-husband had a child from a previous relationship and um who I adore and you know still love deeply to this day but it was interesting because when we were married people would look at me like Mm -hmm. Oh, there must be something wrong with mm-hmm. you, right? Mm-hmm. Because you guys have not had kids, mm-hmm. and it wasn't me. And right. so, <laughs> so we, you know, we later divorced or what have you. But I always got those very <clears throat> intrusive mm-hmm. questions about, you know, when are you guys going to have kids? Mm-hmm. You know, and basically, is mm-hmm. is there you know, look? there's something wrong Mm -hmm. that, you know, because obviously he has a kid and the the questions never went to him. Mm -hmm. So I completely understand what Gabrielle was saying Mm -hmm. when she says it's such a sexist uh, world that we live in because everyone always looks to the woman. Right. 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 
Um, Bree, do you have anything to add? I don't know. You're a little younger than us, but do you get pressured about <laughs> these types of questions or anything? Well, number one, you are all 29 and don't fight me on that. Okay. Love it. <laughs> sure I am. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, and as as you were, as you all were talking, I was thinking of two different situations. The first is a thought I've been having a lot in the workplace. Um, it's not uncommon for you know there to be someone who's expecting a child, you know, working to term or near term. And I always think about how the most private decision a woman or a, the most private decision a person can make is presented the most publicly. I mean, mm -hmm. literally conception right. means, hey, me and this person went behind a closed door and did a thing and now a thing happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for that, right. you know, very private decision to be, I mean, physically it produces on you, you know, it's the most public declaration. Mm -hmm. There's no denying, mm -hmm. hi, I'm Prego. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think about how, you know, a decision that you make for any reason that you want to make it, just because it's presented differently on you, people respond to you differently. Jobs will hire you for less money. Um, you know, yeah. you'll, your career will develop differently. Mm -hmm. There's this, and the second thing is, um, as you all were talking, have any of you listened to the Longest Shortest Time podcast? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -mm. Well, I'll, I'll, I'm going to send this to uh, um, but they just did a series called It's a Real Mother. And it's about a three wow. episode series um, that walks through kind of all the different subtle and nuanced ways that motherhood creeps into um, a woman's earning power over her, the course of her career and also creeps wow. into her creativity over the course of her life. Mm, um, wow. And it, it's it's really, really great. Um, but it's just from the perspective of, you know, like, it, it's it's just very fascinating. And I love when Gabrielle was talking. It's literally just like, stay out of my body, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> right. What's happening inside of me is so personal and yeah. and 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 deeply insular and just for that to be a, a topic of conversation yeah. all the time seems really really painful I don't know how she did it but I'm happy mm -hmm. she told the story yeah um for me it is probably it's probably Leslie you probably have uh experienced the stuff I'm going through because I've been married for five years and we don't have kids and so it's more like oh well uh what are you guys doing what are you waiting for why don't you have kids? Right. Or it's like, <laughs> and so, and and the thing is, I was at a dinner party, probably like twenty five people, and we had just come back from Paris, just you know, sad that we had to leave, just elated that we had the experience. And then I was telling all the Parisian stories, and somebody said, "Oh, well, why don't you have kids? Is that what you got from my story? Is that what you got? <laughs> that was your reaction from my story? <laughs> wow." Wow, I'm sorry. That's just that's just hating. <laughs> that's that's just right, straight. Exactly. That's just straight up hating. But you know, and because I'm a church goer, and, and I've grown up in a church, and I still go to the same church, I still I get I get it even worse. Mm -hmm. And I avoid some people like I can't even do it today. Mm -hmm. I can't. Um. So yeah, yeah, I get it a lot, a whole lot. Wow. Um, you know. And it's interesting, Brian, that up. Because, um, you know, in the workplace, there's um, things, exceptions that are made for people who have kids. Mm -hmm. Oh, they'll be late today, but it's okay because little Johnny had mm -hmm. to do this. Mm -hmm. Oh, no questions are asked because, mm -hmm. oh, I, I had to stay home because he had the sniffles. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, hold up. I'm supposed to take on their workload. Mm. Because I don't have kids and I'm expected to be here. Mm -hmm. oh, mm, 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 mm. That's really so, interesting. Yeah, it's, 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 it is very interesting. The whole idea of a woman who has kids in the workplace versus a woman who does, mm -hmm. does not have kids in the workplace. Even from the standpoint of, oh, she might need to take time off and we don't really want to do that, but we'll allow we'll, we'll, allow it first literally somebody who I have to justify it mm -hmm. um, so I have a question mm -hmm. um, I'm going to just put this out here do you think that the color of the mom determines the oh, treatment that so. they receive oh my gosh oh yes oh yes <laughs> and more popcorn <laughs> <laughs> you, mm -hmm. I think oh, yes. 
that I think that does have an influence. I also think that it is um, class too. Mm, mm, okay. Because I think in 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 where you are positioned in your company, mm-hmm. and I think um, people who um, are at a entry level position, mm-hmm. their their jobs often are less forgiving mm-hmm. when they have to make a combination versus um, someone who is in a higher position. Mm-hmm. I think there is more accommodating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree with that. Um, well, you know, private sector versus public sector may be a little bit different, mm-hmm. um, but the same perception mm-hmm. of um, higher graded individuals versus lower graded individuals mm-hmm. in the public sector. Mm-hmm. get a different scrutiny and I'm mm-hmm. just gonna leave it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, so since I brought up colorism, I just wanted to read this little part of Gabby's book. So um, colorism was a big part of her book because uh, she experienced oh, wow. a lot of things being a darker colored woman. So um, this is chapter this is chapter eight, Black Woman Blues. So on page 114, it says, for the longest time, I wouldn't date anyone darker than me. It was ingrained in me that I didn't see it as an active choice and that I was friend zoning anyone with more melanin than me. Mm. Crazy. Crazy. Then then she goes on. um, And then um, someone had to check her really good. Someone in her life checked her and said, you got got some issues about color. Because even her mom, who was... Um, a lighter skin, she was isolated because she was light skinned. So she married right. a darker man. And so, um, so here, here is Gabri, uh, one page later. And it says, once I dated black men, I felt like I could breathe. I mean, that's, that's pretty heavy. I don't, I've never dated, um, outside of black. Um, do you guys have any comments about what Gabby has said? Or do you have any uh, thoughts about interracial dating or your color or anything like that? Well, I I could relate with her about um, within her family, Mm -hmm. and she she talks about I can't remember if it was in that chapter or another chapter that her mother is fairer Mm -hmm. than her 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 mother's side of the family is Mm -hmm. fairer um, than she is, and um, my mother's family is much fairer than I am. Thank goodness for the free loads bringing some melon into the mix. <laughs> and, um, and we spent, as kids, we spent a lot of time, more time with my mother's side of the family than with my father's side of the family. Mm-hmm. So it was very, you know, even to this day, you know, I'll say, oh, these are my cousins. And mm-hmm. people will look at me like, oh, she must be adopted or what oh have you. God. Because we have, you know, there's there's such a contrast there. Definitely understand how, you know, that Mm -hmm. was looked upon. And I even felt that way growing up as a kid that I didn't actually fit into the family Mm -hmm. because my brother and I were so much, um, we were darker than Mm -hmm. the rest of our family. Mm -hmm. Um, So I definitely understand that that stigma that she had Mm -hmm. and trying to feel like she was a part of that family. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. Anybody else want to go before I go? Free? Well. I'll go next. Go for it. Mm, that, this whole thing about color, it's how we're socialized in America, mm-hmm. first of all. Mm-hmm. And I think as children, because growing up, my my family, every, every hue under the sun, Mm-hmm. The whole we and we could do another whole uh, podcast on Swirl Sweet Show mm-hmm. about textures of hair. Ooh, you child. know, it goes yeah. from one extreme to another mm-hmm. in our family. Now, when she talks about that's when she talked when when you just said she talked about you know she could breathe when she started to take 
dating um, black men. Well, then you weren't being yourself mm -hmm. with the white men you mm -hmm. were dating. You sure. were acting. Right. Because um, it, your choice is your choice. You ask the question, have I ever dated outside of race? No, I haven't. Because they had never really been attracted to me. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. A black man's a black man, whether he's light-skinned or dark-skinned. It's not his skin tone mm -hmm. that I'm looking at necessarily you know I, there's a like teeth in the shoes he wears <laughs> <laughs> blue black or almost white mm -hmm. but still thinking a black man but if his teeth and shoes ain't got the game that's the stage left um but it, it definitely is your own security what 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 are you secure in why are you saying you can't? I got a problem with that. Why are you saying you can't? You couldn't breathe until you dated. Like now you could be yourself. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. I need to say. I need to hear that. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, spelt out a little more. So what do you? What, what's the difference? And 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 Glennis, just um, just for your benefit, she spends um, a lot of time in the beginning of the book. Mm -hmm really examining her childhood yeah okay, okay. And, her, and and they moved um they moved from nebraska right yeah, oh, yeah. they moved from okay. nebraska to this middle class, middle class neighborhood mm -hmm. and um and they were a handful of blacks in that neighborhood and there was um i won't say pressure but they were they were they were to assimilate and she it's the socialization it was it's the socialization not just at um not just at school but at home too mm -hmm. yeah. right and so i think you know that was the big question mark and and caused confusion in her own life and and she admits that you know she lived like this double life because mm -hmm. when she would go back to Nebraska, right. she right. felt more comfortable there mm -hmm. being an African American versus growing mm -hmm. up in in California. Mm -hmm. And in mm -hmm. in some respects, where there were um, not a, a lot of people, a lot of black people in her class, it she felt she needed to be pitted against the other black person mm -hmm. to show that she mm -hmm. was on top and she was, right. this, you know, right. she wasn't like that black person there. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. She should have came to Howard. We'd have fixed all that. <laughs> <laughs> Bree, any thoughts? I think that um, I, I love the context that you just gave Leslie to the situation where Gabrielle is kind of feeling this, you know, dual consciousness of being black in a very comfortable way, but also having to kind of present white at home. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of a part in the book where she's back home in California and she's talking about, you know, how her summer was or something, where she's talking about, you know, her family. And then she says that she doesn't really tell the white students much about mm -hmm. the gang violence and the shooting mm -hmm. and, you know, the drug and crime that has killed a lot of her family and or a lot of people who she knows in Nebraska because, and it says, quote, they didn't deserve to hear them. Like, she's saying mm -hmm. that these white kids don't deserve to hear the stories mm -hmm. of, um, you know, what's happening in this other part of my reality. So I think that just kind of, like, speaks to the double, like, the double consciousness that it seems like she lived with for a long time, kind of institute, like, you know, internalized, and that's where it gets to the, to the systemic... Um, aspect that that we're talking about and i and glennis i think that when you were saying it, it's so systematic and it's very societal the fact that it did exist like at home and at school mm -hmm. you know it doesn't seem it seems like in a way nebraska you know nikki honestly was her escape right and it seems like you know when she says that she didn't breathe again being in this relationship with a black man it kind of seems like she felt that she was returning to her herself mm. I mean, I'm of the school of mind where, you know, as long as you get where you go and it's fine. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you look at the, the melanin and the person who she's married to today, who's her soulmate, I think that kind of speaks for itself too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's, that's true. I, I think, um, I, I guess I come from a school of thought, like I grew up in Jersey 
And when when I say I grew up, and then people ask me where we're at in Jersey, and I tell them Patterson, they're like, oh, and you tell people? I was like, whoa, whoa, be easy. Because mm-hmm. I will defend it all day, every day. Mm-hmm. Because it gave me the common and street sense mm-hmm. that helps me survive in mm-hmm. corporate or the higher levels of public sector work, as well as the book sense that I got in another area. So I guess for me, it's, I bring that up to say, for me, that playing that dual vote, vote hey, white kids ask me, ain't none, of, ain't none of your business. I don't need to tell you anything. Mm-hmm. But I don't need to hide who I am with somebody that I'm calling a partner. Mm-hmm. Because either you're going to be with me or you're not. And maybe that's why my black ass still single, but I'm okay. <laughs> I am. But you know, the, other, the other thing is <laughs> that was um, striking. It's, it's not, it's not just, it's in our culture's DNA. That's true. Because she brought up um, when she was when she was first starting acting in Hollywood, or even like growing up, and she and people would say, "Oh, she's pretty for a brown skin girl." Oh, mm-hmm. I got, yeah. I used to get that all the time. And and so it's it's not just yeah. oh she felt comfortable, you know she finally felt comfortable. It is you know in our culture that we say things that we judge the beauty still mm-hmm. based on skin tone. Yeah. Very, very much up. So I have a question because I'm I'm pretty middle of the road um, as far as like skin tone, but my brother is dark skin. I mm-hmm. never he never came home talking about he got made fun of because he was dark skin. It do right. you think that um, black girls or black women um, feel more scrutiny or they they experience more scrutiny because of their skin color rather than dark skinned men? You know what I think? I, I mm, that I really to Leslie's point and to the question that you just asked. I have I don't know a man who, in my years of being around, have ever heard. Oh, you're cute for a dark, dark skin, skin man. guy. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. I think we get it all the time because you, you know what the standard. Of beauty is in America. It's definitely not p- African American women are mm-hmm. not the standard mm-hmm. of beauty around the world, in America included. So, um, to answer your question, I think that whole piece about, yeah, you are cute for a dark skinned woman, or yeah, oh, your hair, that, that's your hair? Mm-hmm. You know, because it's not a, of a certain texture. I think we do get more scrutiny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really do. Then mm-hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree 100%. Huh. All right. But do we care? Oh. But you know, we but you you brought up a good point because as a child when going to the and to visit my dad I wasn't consider- as a little girl. I wasn't considered one of the cute girls because I was um, dark. Mm. So when I was very little, I came back home, and I tell the story all the time because you have to grow and accept yourself very early. And to Leslie's point and Ariane's point, you know, if you don't have the support at home, then it creates those insecurities in you. Mm-hmm. So I remember the first time when I went to the south and came back, and I was teased because I was dark. Oh, I went through this whole thing. Well, mom, maybe I can get some bleach and cream. Maybe I could do this shit. Ho, ho, ho. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was like, Mm-mm, because there was a whole lot of things. Skin tone, I was started to become scared of lightning because of all the, you know, you go to the South, they got all those things. Oh, sit in the middle of the damn floor. It's lightning. Don't say nothing. Don't breathe. Don't eat. No, you can't go to the bathroom. Lightning. It's got all that. I didn't want to leave the house. I didn't want to look outside. I, my mother said, oh, let's shut this down. It's lightning. Let's stick our hands out the window. I could have been electrocuted. My mother was like, stick your hands out the window. Ain't nothing wrong. I ain't scared of lightning no more. After she went through, no. Let me show you all these dark skin um, cards, book, you know, 
young girls in these books that are dark skinned, blah, blah, blah. That next year I went to school, it had to be third grade. I was like, why y'all not dark? Mm-hmm. But the support was at home. Mm-hmm. The support was from home. So. All right. So I want to ask um, you guys who read the book, um, did you have a favorite chapter or a chapter that you really connected with? For um, case, or a story. It doesn't matter. I, I, there were a couple of stories. And I don't, you know, I don't give the impression that I didn't enjoy the book because I really did enjoy the book. Um, <laughs> One, how she started, well, how she started off, because I really respect the fact that she spends a lot of time mentoring young women mm-hmm. and um, and working on a lot of causes. And, and so I really respect that about her. And she had, um, I don't know if you remember this part where she was talking about how she was mentoring at a school mm-hmm. and the young girl raised her hand and she said... Um, the young girl said something about, oh, so I sucked his penis. Wait, and oh so, God. and, um, and Gabrielle was like, well, why did you do it? And the girl said, because he asked me to. And so then, of course, I would have been like, okay, school is over. <laughs> um, <but then> Gabrielle, <laughs> Gabrielle came back and said, why did you eat you up? And, and, and then I was I was like, what? And she went on to explain that young women surrender their power too quickly. And so, and she asked the young girl, she, you know, she told that young girl that, and she told her some other things that I'm not going to repeat because mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm not that grown and sexy. But basically, <laughs> she was saying, girl, stop giving up your power and start expecting and demanding power. From men and you can't continue to be called a queen if your crown is not on straight so I really respect the story about that and then um, the last chapter the final chapter where she talks about her girlfriend who had breast cancer that like just brought Mm -hmm. me to tears absolutely And, and now when you have somebody so close to you, you can't see what is going on. And so just reminding yourself, like, sometimes you have to remove the emotion to deal with the issue. Mm -hmm. So I really did. I really appreciated her, you know, sharing that story. Wow. Brady, what about you? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. So for me, um, one of the chapters that really resonated with me was Open House. And in this chapter, Gabrielle Union's talking about how her and her mother used to, you know, just go look at open houses on the weekends. Kind of, you know, the way that you, I guess you would do, you know, you get the paper and you see, oh, you know, these open houses. And you'll just go pop by, not because you're in the market, but just because you'd be a nosy, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) I used to do it with my mom and even especially now in Brooklyn, I'm like, See what they're for. Mm-hmm. I could probably finagle, but you know, it's just. It, I think it's. <laughs> but the in the chapter, Gabrielle, the point that she's making is that her mother kind of started to expose her at a young age to what it looks like to go somewhere that you're not currently, mm-hmm. or go somewhere that you haven't seen. You know, they would go look at these houses and they would be humongous and you know all empty and very very expensive, but it would just be the idea of. No, someone normal lives here. You can you can be a person who mm-hmm. works hard and, you know, your reality can be expanded, you know, a hundredfold. And and I, I really kind of love just the, the mental image of, you know, a little girl and the mom just going around and for a mother or for, you know, someone who's a real leader in that way to be the one to open your eyes to say you can think bigger, you can think whatever you want, Um I really enjoyed the open house chat. That was probably and also because you know that's when Gabrielle gets into the relationship that her mother had to her. Yeah. Um, and they, you know, it gets pretty deep into, you know, like inter kind of how intergenerational relationships change what it is that you expect for yourself in mm-hmm. your own future. Yeah. Mm. 
That's awesome. Um, that is. I think my favorite chapter was Mittens. So there's this chapter, Glennis, where <laughs> Gabrielle, so she's talking about how when um, Chris, her and the family and the boys, they moved to Chicago when he played for the Bulls. And of course, Chicago is super cold. So she used to walk to the gym. And of course, when you're walking to the gym in Chicago in the winter, you're all wrapped up and everybody's got their black hoodies on, their black coats, right. wrapped up. So I think she said that two, women were like, like, uh, stay-at-home moms, they block the sidewalk, just sort of just standing with their children or strollers or whatever, or in groups. And she was trying to get through one morning to get to the gym. And so she's walked up and she said, excuse me, ladies. I don't know her tone. It was a book. I, you know, she said, excuse me, ladies. Right. And then she was walking past. They moved out of her way. She walked past and one of them called her a thug. And she said, well, and she was like, I'm trying to figure out what about me walking through y'all was thug-like. I'm wearing right. the same gear that everybody else in Chicago is wearing. It's cold. I'm wrapped up. Does it, because I'm over a certain height, is it my skin color? Like, what about me is thug-like? So she said, the next day, I put on mittens. Mittens aren't, aren't aggressive. That, that's going to help me. <laughs> but the fact is, this whole chapter is about her just changing something about her. Like, like I, I know a lot of times, especially in the workplace, black women are considered aggressive, especially if we, we have, uh, you know, sort of type A personalities. We're labeled as aggressive and thug-like and controlling or whatever. But I just thought that was interesting that she used mittens, you know, to try to, you know, lessen the blow to well, the people. It, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I thought that was well, cute. That's very, it, it, it's always the case because it's in the workplace, we are not allowed to be assertive because it's viewed as aggressive mm -hmm. versus our white counterparts can be assertive and not aggressive. And I have said a couple of times, it always depends on where, who, whom the message is coming from mm -hmm. as how it is mm -hmm. pre received mm -hmm. and precede. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. As women of color, and I, you know, to tell them, I was like, well, first of all, I'm not a Southern belle. I talk with my hands, and it's not being a Southern. This is a, who I am. Mm -hmm. Now, I accept you for the things that you're doing. You know, I kind of tick some of those off, mm -hmm. and it kind of resonates a little better with them. And I, you know, and, and it, it's all one of those things where folks have to get to know each other. But if, if you're on the street walking past people, they're gonna make they're going to have preconceived notions of mm -hmm. who you are or how you, um, uh, how, just how folks view you. Mm -hmm. And, and it's all from their, from their point of view and right. from their reality. And I don't give a flying who. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, Gabrielle Union is on TV. What's this movie with DMX? Oh, she was young. In this movie. Wow, they showing that? What movie is that with her and DMX? Hold on. DMX? Yeah. DMX? She talked about it. She talked about DMX in the book, but I forgot what Oh, yeah, because that's how she got the dog. Right. From yep. Yes, from DMX. And oh, she's in. Matter of fact, my homeboy is in this movie. He went to jail oh. for killing his wife, but uh, oh. she's in this movie. Oh, Cradle to the Grave. Mike, who is in this movie? Yep. The movie is Cradle, Cradle to, to the, the Grave. grave. Yep. Yeah. Wow. wow. That's crazy. Blast from the past. <laughs> yeah. It's on TV. I'm going to be back to see it. I'm turning it around. <laughs> yeah, we see it. <laughs> okay, really quick. Oh, I'm sorry, Siri, you go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to ask you guys if you wanted to uh, ask us anything or add anything about the book. So I have one last point to make. Sure. And it's not so much about the book as it's about Gabrielle Union, but... Do we know what brand of unicorn blood she drinks? Because she has looked a fresh, like P8 yeah. fresh, is beautiful. smooth 32. She's for, little, she said, well, oh, okay, are yeah. you on Snapchat? No, okay. I'm on Instagram. but Okay, uh -huh. oh, so I follow her Snapchat. That's where she is active the most. She posts daily, several times a day. Um, and she goes through a routine. I love how she, corny she is with her relationship. It's so funny. Yeah. This is so, so cheesy. <laughs> um, they, she's, she said that she drinks a gallon of water a day and you can see her carrying it in the car, carrying it on set. She drinks a gallon of water a day. And I think one of her secrets is frankly 
water. But of course, yeah. she works. She works out like a mad woman. She has a trainer yeah. wherever she goes. But yeah, she just takes care of herself. Now, don't get it twisted because she throws them back. She drinks, and it's all right. it's all on Snapchat. She drinks and she eats, but she also takes really good care of herself. So well, she worked. We can all drink and eat like that too. If we oh. worked out as much. Okay, I wish. Right, man. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Leslie, did you have anything else about the book or Gabrielle Union? I, I just um I just really appreciate how open she was and vulnerable. Like the, mm-hmm. the whole thing about how it took what almost six months to say what she was grateful for. Yeah. She to yeah. come up with ten things that she was grateful for. And the mm-hmm. and the, the first three things were food items. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Which, which would be on my my top ten. It would be my top nine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for her, her to say that, and and that you know the love that she has for her kids mm-hmm. and family is yeah. just so evident. Yeah. And 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 I love the the last thing. I love the fact that she has a good relationship with mm-hmm. her stepmother mm-hmm. because wow. it's not. Mm-hmm. If if that if if that is not a testament to love yeah. and and being right. persistent, yeah. I don't know what is because yeah. I don't know if I could be that gracious. Yeah. Um the last thing I wanted to bring up was so a part of her talking about her and Dwayne's relationship was the fact that he's had money for a while. He's had money for such a long time that He's a bit jaded from racism. So the way yes. that, the way that he's treating the boys that are growing up in in their house is just he's giving them a little too much freedom as if what's not going on around them like he doesn't see. So there was a chapter Glennis where okay, so they live, I don't know, in this community, this gated community, um near Chris Bosch and I think Chris Bosch he's an, he's a, a former bas- basketball player NBA player so he has a gym a private gym and correct me if I'm not wrong if I'm if I'm wrong but he has a gym and so the boys can take And he's married to a white girl. Uh, yeah. Okay. So um okay. Chris Bosch gave them gave the boys access to his private gym a key. It was like hey just come anytime blah blah blah. And so this one particular night, it was dark, and the boy said, oh, we're going to go to the gym. Chris gave us a key. And their dad was like, oh, okay, go ahead. So he walks in the kitchen and Gabby and tells Gabby, oh, yeah, the boys are going to the gym. And she was like, oh, so you're going to let them ride in a golf cart in this neighborhood, dark, <laughs> to a gym that don't belong to them? What if the key don't work? What happens? They're going to be roaming around this neighborhood, three little black boys in this rich neighborhood, and nobody knows that they're your kids. What's going to happen? Trayvon Martin. Long story short, the key didn't work. The key didn't work. They ro- Wait, the cops stopped Gabby and Chris first, flashed the flashlight, and was like, oh, okay, all right, well, you go, you go ahead. I know who you are. You're, you know. So they catch up to the boys, and I guess the light scared the boys. One of the boys goes running which is what she told them not to do if the police or anybody approached them. Anyway, but it just amazes me how you're not that far removed from where you came from. How do you get so jaded so quickly in my eyes? How does that even happen? But, you know. Before you even start, so when you say he has money a lot longer, his father's a millionaire? No, no. No. So no. you mean... He has been in the NBA a little bit longer than she started making money. In exactly. Her That's what I mean. So he ain't really had no money no long time. Yeah. He need to get over that. See, mm-hmm. that's what's wrong with us. Mm-hmm. How you figure like you all that because you, what a $40 million slave. What if you stop, break your ankle to mark and play mm-hmm. and you haven't invested well? You need to get over yourself, Dwayne. Mm-hmm. Really? What? So I thought that was an interesting they story. Two of you had a damn hoodie on in the wrong neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, so. listen to Gabrielle and live a little, <laughs> live a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, since we went over the book for a, a, a good amount of time, I have five rapid questions for all of you. And they uh -oh, are here we go. They're please. holiday style. They're holiday style. Okay. Oh, right. this is so exciting. Yeah. I, I always hear these on podcasts, but I've never done one. Okay. <laughs> well, All my not, dreams are yes. coming true. So they're, they're five questions. They're not really <laughs> rapid. So answer how you please. Okay, the first one is, how do you handle holiday potlucks? Do you have a strategy? Mm-hmm. I'm listening, Gl easy. Glennis. You are oh, okay, so it's Can I hit. tell y'all about this meme that I saw on the internet? It was... It was, um, it was a picture and it said, you say company potluck, I hear. And it was a picture of a cat inside of the KitchenAid oh. mixer, just like fur everywhere. And I'm like, yep, that's it. Because you know why? You can't trust everybody kitchen. <laughs> I'm not even trying to be funny acting. Maybe it's because I'm from the South. I don't know. But... Like, it's not personal. I just, like, like I want to be like, you define clean. Show me a spatula. Is this clean or not? Mm -hmm. If we don't agree, then I'm really, no. I'm mm -hmm. good on what you... <laughs> yeah. Like, you so, can drop I, the mic on that people. one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what does your sink look like? Did you wash the sink before you started cooking? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You did. I, mm -hmm. I like that you even went through all of that. Because I need to ask the question. No, don't. Our holiday potluck, I don't eat the food. I bring some wine, call it a day. If we're talking about work uh, potluck, we're not talking about supporting good friends potlucks, because then that's another issue. No, but, no, mm -hmm. not really friend potlucks. I'm thinking more. Yeah, company. no, I'm work talking about work, work, work potlucks. Work. Yeah. Work. You talk yeah. about work potlucks? Uh huh. So what I did, I joined the potluck holiday party <laughs> planning committee. <laughs> And what we did was, oh, we're going to give a prize to who makes the best dish. So we need you to label what dish you make. <laughs> That's fucking genius. That is fucking genius, Glennis. You put your, everybody put, so Susie Q made this old dessert. And you know she walk out the damn bathroom past the sink. Mm -hmm. No, not to eat Susie Q stuff. <laughs> Miss, Miss Shaquita been around a minute. She been making that fried chicken. You know she the cleans but she always clean her dead, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you made it? Okay, we can eat that. <laughs> Glennis bought some tossed salad from such and such. Oh, we can eat that. Everybody named went on they dish. Mm -hmm. So you knew what dish you could eat and what dish you didn't. So if we weren't doing potluck, I made the suggestion. Mm -hmm. Oh, how about we do the grill? I'll go <laughs> pick it up and set it up. Everybody give me their $10. Or we have it a Caribbean theme mm -hmm. holiday party. <laughs> got the cocoa bread. We got the rice and peas. We got the jerk chicken and the curry chicken from the grill. We know who we can sue if somebody gets sick because it was nasty. <laughs> That's how you handle holiday potlucks at work. <clears throat> Leslie? Or you I, don't I don't have anything to add. I okay. think it's all been said. I, I got one thing to add. Can y'all see this picture? Can y'all see that picture? Is that, that, a, that is a that cat. That is a cat. Dinner? Wait, this was taken a few days ago. This is a real picture. Okay, I have a friend. I have a friend. And she has a friend, and she was tagged on this. I don't know what the caption says. It doesn't matter. But I said, but you know these folks wasn't black. I said, if you don't take, tell your friends to take that Why cat. are they on look, the same it, surface? Right, it's right in front of the KitchenAid mixer. Look at that. It's what about I say? the cat look dander. At that. Look, uh, all up in the food. Okay. See, that's why I don't like cats. They get on stuff they supposed to. <laughs> Dogs don't be up on the cabinet. <laughs> the cats be up on stuff they not supposed to. Listen. See, I don't like cats. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm good. Um. <laughs> I, I, I bring. I learned, I bring bread. Like I'll go to. I'll go to Whole Foods and get the bougiest bread and be like, "Can you slice this?" <laughs> I do okay. every year. I'm like, <laughs> um, okay. Uh, next question. Okay, what was your most memorable kiss Christmas gift as a kid? 
Oh, I'll, I'll go. Okay. I posted it on um, the Vino One uh, Facebook page. It was my Barbie dream house. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Glennis Bree, what about you? Oh, my God. My most memorable, um, well, my birthday is the day after Christmas. Oh, so, oh. yeah. Mm. Save your sympathy, save your tears. I'm already jaded. <laughs> But I will say one of my favorite memories was um, a sleepover I had. I think I was maybe 12 or, or 13. And afterwards, our, we, we had the sleepover. Then we went to the movies and we went to the mall. And I felt very much like a preteen. And mm. that was a like a really fun kind of Christmas slash birthday experience. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Wow. My most memorable gift. Well, it's actually my dog, Lady. I got a cockapoo. Oh, a poodle, half cocker spaniel, and she was under. I had I had asked for a dog in that one of the Christmases. I didn't get it, and this particular Christmas, I think I turned seven when I got Lady, and she was under. And she was just the cutest little fur oh. ball. Oh my god, she was adorable. And I got her to say, I think I got her that same year. With this game, now you remember this was like the early 70s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I got uh, Operation and this game where it was a buck and you had to drop these marbles and flipped over. I don't remember what the hell the name, but the dog was the most memorable. Okay. So, got my I, lady. I think it was for me. So my birthday is in October. So in October, I got a Cabbage Patch doll. But in um, um, for Christmas, I got another Cabbage Patch doll, and my mom bought me a twin stroller and all this twin clothes. And twi I was like, oh, my <laughs> Oh, my gosh. You can see. And she let me. She let me take the Cabbage Patch dolls to my family's house where we ate dinner. Oh, my God. You I, I don't want to talk to anybody else. Like, why? <laughs> Oh my God! Are you touching my cabbage patch? Um, no, that's not happening. We're over here. <laughs> but yeah, that's those are with the days when I was a so child. So you had one cabbage patch born in October, mm -hmm. one born in December, and mm -hmm. they were twins. Okay. Yep, they were twins, and so she got me the double stroller, and then also the little um, you know, the ch uh, it's not a high chair, but it's a chair that connects to the table. Yeah. It, yeah, I had two yeah. of those so they I could sit Ooh. in between girl. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> and then like um just a few twin outfits. Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, you know what? And that was a year before my brother was born. So that was the beginning of the end. So that was like <laughs> that's it. That was your fun girl. So did y'all dress like triplets? Yes. Yes. On on Christmas actually. Yes. <laughs> Yes, we had little pink dresses. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. You have got to show us some of these mm -hmm. pictures. The next time I go to my grandmother's house, I will find a picture and I will show y'all. It was serious. Wow. Oh, it was serious. How adorable. Yeah. yeah. How adorable. <laughs> oh, I knew and you were a triplet, Serena. <laughs> Ciao. Okay, next question. What is your least favorite Christmas song? Christmas song you hate. Oh, Santa got run over by a reindeer. Oh, I wish they okay. would stop. <laughs> I hate that. Hate, hate, hate it. <laughs> oh, what's my least favorite? Oh my God. Like you just turn it. Um, I guess Noel would be it because mm. the pitch is too high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -mm. So, um, I really don't like Frosty the the um, Frosty Snowman. the Snowman. Mm. It okay. doesn't do much for me. Okay. All right. Um, y'all are going. I think the internet is going to shut me down for this, but. <laughs> um. Yeah. The Temptations. Uh -oh. uh, yeah. Can't do it. The Temptation Silent Night. Y'all that little, I don't know. It was know, so great talking to you Christmas. all. Um, everyone have a great rest of the night. The show's canceled. Dorita's canceled. 
We're taking all of her black cards. I, mean, I can't. I can't. International can't. revoke. Like she's on the APB, like the no fly list. I'm over it. She doesn't like not the temptation. I'm I'm over it. I'm over it. It was too much. I you don't understand. You don't like, like that silent listen. night when you come oh, in. Oh my god. You don't know, listen. I grew up in a, I grew up in a very black house with a lot of Hennessy and a lot of silent Ooh. night and a lot of temptations. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I've done my time. I've done. I've done it. I'm done. I'm done. The so, reader, you yeah. haven't lived as long as me. That is the staple mm -mm. Christmas song. Mm -mm. Exactly. Yeah. That and the Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer Temptation. Let me you find it real ass. quick, like a play for we oh, hang up. Here we go. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Next question. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, how many glasses of wine do you have at the company holiday party? All right. Say it's not Depends a potluck. Y'all are. What'd you say? Depends on who bring the wine. No, no, no. no. So y'all going out. Y'all going out for a holiday party. It's catered at a restaurant. Y'all blocked off. Got a little section. How many glasses of wine do you have? Do you have a rule? Brie, you look at that. I have a rule. I have a rule. Okay. I'm listening. Go ahead, Larry. Two at the most. Mm. Okay. At the most. All right. Well, I, my situation is a little different because everybody in my division drink. Mm. We would have, it's like, Glace, you going to bring this? You what, you what you bring? Everybody would bring wine and everybody would be drinking. So, mm. man, there's no limit. You but I do know. I'm not getting, as they say, white girl drunk mm -hmm. amongst them. Okay. That's not happening. Okay. That's not happening. So if I feel like I'm getting tipsy, but I can drink a whole lot of wine before I get tipsy, so mm -hmm. it don't really matter. <laughs> but, <laughs> so I don't count the glasses. Okay. Bree, what about you? I'm over here having, like, visceral reactions to <laughs> Christmas parties past. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Do I'm, tell, my dear. Do tell. We're listening. The thing is, I'm a very social drinker, which mm -hmm. means as someone's talking, this is me. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, really? Mm -hmm. Gets me every time. Wow. But the, the, the thing about me and the Christmas holiday parties is I feel like my brain kind of gives me like a 15 minute countdown like NASA. It's like 15 minutes until you explode. And it's like <laughs> you need to leave this space. Get on a train. Get get outside the building. Like you, you, you can't be here anymore. <laughs> oh, well, that's good that you legit. got that countdown. That's good that you have that. Exactly. Like, mm. And well, I, and I do come with that countdown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, yes, that's excellent. so funny. Yeah. So I, I, need, I need to, one thing I have learned, um, and I'll blame this on my youth, I used to mix drinks at the holiday party. So I'd be like, oh, Long Island iced tea because it's open bar and then a mojito, then a margarita, then some red wine. Mm. And it was like, these are piss poor choices, Brianna. Yeah. Piss poor. So I'm, I'm above that. Now it's just I have to just reel it in, <laughs> pull it together, <laughs> and stop drinking. I'm just chatty, chatty, chatty. So I'm just like, look, look, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's me. Why is that funny? Why that, is that funny? Frida? What about you, Riri? Um... I am, you know, it's weird <clears throat> at my current position. It is the two glass. It is the two glass minimum. But the thing is, so it'll be all of us. And then the black people will go somewhere else. Um, yep. And continue drinking. So um, I, I think it is probably like the one or two glass minimum in front of all of the folks, you know, mixed company, all that kind of stuff. But the party doesn't end. And a lot of them have, like, kids and families and stuff. So they always leave early. Right. But for some reason, all black girls are a little bit more free. So we, you know, 
we sort of continue mm. on, but mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the two glass. Yeah, yeah, two glass. I agree with you, Leslie. I, I have the I have a um a separation between church and state. Ah, okay. And and so it, it is. You know, mm -hmm. I'll socialize with you, but. Yeah, this is yeah. where we uh -huh. this is where we are cutting it off. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. now, and, and I do have a group that I, you know I will go out mm -hmm. to happy hour with, what have you. But in the the general setting, this is what it is. Got it. I think that's a pretty solid rule of thumb. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. All right. So last question: White elephant or a secret Santa? Can you say, say the again? question one more time? Sure. White elephant or secret Santa? I want a white elephant because I'm a troll. <laughs> I love trolling people with gifts. <laughs> I, I love to just like wrap up like like a company like binder memo <laughs> and put it in like a box, like an iPad box. I would do that. I'm I'm a complete. Oh like God. I've given away. <laughs> That's so horrible. It's, it's just <laughs> So oh, I, I choose that. white elephant. <laughs> Do we have to choose either? Yes, one or the other. I had never heard of white elephant. Yes, you have. What? Are you serious? Where you just bring never. in a gift, you bring in a gift under like 10 or $20, and you put it under the tree, and everybody has a turn, and they pick the gift and open it, and then that next person has the choice, either pick another gift or either take your gift. <laughs> Why are you no, giving up the no. side eye? No. <laughs> we never oh, done I'm that. <laughs> it's always been a secret Santa type thing. Oh, you okay. Pull a name. I've never did the white elf. I'm trying to think. Did we ever? No. Mm, okay. So it's <laughs> funny. I'm gonna have to take secret Santa. Okay. I I love I love white elephant and I love. Like Brie finding like the cheesiest, worst, horrible gift. And I think I gotta check my office because there's a gift that I keep every year and I wrap it up. I mean, it's like oh the my worst. God. It is the worst. I keep but the um the person I'm dating at his job, they do Secret Santa mm -hmm. and they are serious. Serious. Like yeah. I, their list of demands mm. of what they want and and, um, and have a high dollar figure, I think, for like coworkers and what have you. And he was telling me one year, um, this girl did not like what she got. She, you know, that person clearly didn't spend mm -hmm. what the dollar amount was. Right. And she was pissed and demanded her money back. And she was not participating again. Oh my gosh. I was like, y'all taking this too serious. Yeah. This is this is way too serious. Now, see, wow. I'm I'm gonna choose white elephant, but I'm the opposite. I don't spend a whole lot of money on gifts, but I'm gonna get the gift that everybody's gonna fight over. Like last year, I got right. this okay, so I got this long wooden like log. So what you do is and it has a like a cup holder at the end. So it's a long log that has slits in it. So you add your baguette. And then you, it cuts perfect pieces oh. going down. And then you put your olive oil and herb in the cup at the end. Do you know if you oh, were fighting over that gift? Oh, my God. And it was like, what, $12, $10? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm that girl. I'm like, mm, everybody going to be drooling over my gift this year. Watch. See, it's <laughs> not necessarily the price. It's not the gift all. itself. It's not yeah. the price. Mm -hmm. What I will say, one of the things about um, White Elephant that always cracks me up every year is that the best gifts are always the wine and the liquor. Oh, and sure. those are the ones that people yes. fight over. Yes. And yes. gifts and gift cards. Yeah. 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 Like Starbucks. And gift cards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I have the, the gift that I have is, um, it is the queen mom holding her purse and she's solar powered. So when the sun hits her, she waves. That is so cute. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man. That's, this was that's a good white elephant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this was fun, guys. Yay. Yay. 
Woot woot. Brie Books, thank you for joining us. So thank you oh my for, gosh. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming back. Thanks for coming. I'm so happy to be back. It's so good to meet you, Glennis. Thank you, it's Leslie and Sarita. I didn't see you the whole time, but. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I look like a I look like a twelve year old. It's kind of weird. So you're okay. She no, that's a she good does thing. Not look like, she does not look like a twelve year old. No, whenever I go drink, I'm I always get carded. I'm like, I pay taxes. Leave me alone. <laughs> May I please have this overpriced orange wine? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if you are not following Brie Books, um, Brie Books, where can everybody follow you on Instagram? Yes, I have Books Pod, B R I B O O K S P O D, and of course Brie Books Podcast, which is on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, um, and BrieBooksPod.com. It's kind of fifty percent book club, fifty percent kind of personal slash professional development, and it's just a good time. <laughs> and she wait, she does the cutest um Instagram stories of her going to the farmers market on the weekend and I watch it every week. It's so cute. And she has a budget and she tries to stick to this budget when she goes to the farmers market and she buys her vegetables and her sweet oh and flowers sometimes. It's so adorable. Oh my flowers gosh. when my budget is intact because <laughs> I have to learn how to, you know, this whole deferred gratification racket. Mm -hmm. I don't <laughs> No, but thank you so much, Sarita, and to the Swirl Suite, and just to all of you for being such fun supporters and collaborators, and I'm excited for all of our 2018s. I'm actually just curious. What are you going to in 2018? Wait, say, say it one more you time. Broke up. Yeah, you were breaking up. Say it one more time. Oh, sorry. I was saying, I'm just curious. What are you all kind of looking forward to in 2018? Wow. That's, um, a, that's a big question. Easy, debt free. And <laughs> my, trip to, my trip to Bali. <gasps> to Bali? Wow, that's nice. Wow. Yeah. Excited. A friend's 50th birthday. Wow. And he, he has pulled out all the stops. Uh, so I'm so excited. So if anybody knows where I can get a special occasion, an $8 massage, yes. That, <laughs> that too. But what I was going to say for his for his party birthday party, he wants us to all dress up in Bal Balinese attire. Oh, that, that's the thing, cheap. Mm. But he was like, "So you can wait till you get to Bali and buy this along here." I was like, "They don't have butts like me in Bali. <laughs> I need to try that mess on ahead of time, make sure all that work, and then be in your pictures forever in a little too short sarong. Not happening." I would get myself over here. <laughs> so if anybody know, I've you know researched a couple of good web, a couple of websites. I might order from these websites, but if anybody else knows any websites where I can get a ball in these attire, because they do like a lace shirt with sashes or um, bodices and things of that nature, and they do a sarong with an under sarong. Mm -hmm. So I actually got it down pat, but we'll see if I can find a decent. Price point. If not, now I'm gonna have to because I'm not gonna be in nobody's picture and my stuff look like I got it from costumes.com. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, oh nah. my gosh. Nah. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. That's awesome. Well, today I spent my Sunday. Let me get said prop. <laughs> oh Lord. What is that? I um, was planning the next six months of Vino 301, wow. trying to figure out what uh, what I'm going to do wow. so, you know, I can stop being caught flat-footed and waiting to the last minute. So, so in 2018, I will be efficient and organized. <clears throat> Lizzie, you already efficient and organized. Stop I feel it. like you are, yeah. I'm getting ready to say, okay. viewers do not, viewers right. and listeners, don't believe that. Make don't it that. till you make it. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> what about you, Riri? Um, For me, so this week I finished a production certification class. Um, Yay! And, oh, yay! <laughs> and so I've already, I already have a gig. I'm producing another podcast. Behind the scenes, 
So cool. Yeah. So yeah. So they needed some help. So I offered my services and they hired me. So excellent. Excellent. So we'll see where that goes. But yeah, I'm excited about that. I learned a lot. That is excellent. That's great. Learned a lot. Yeah. That That is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Yay. So Bree, what about you? Am I excited about in 2018? Yes. Um, I think I am really excited. Just kind of like put my energy behind the Brie Books podcast and and just to kind of like go full force with mm-hmm. what it is that really matters to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm really excited for 2018. And I feel like this is the best way to close out 2017. Like, this year has been a dumpster fire. Oh, but even yeah. so, we're yeah. all still here. I'm happy we are all here. And mm-hmm. and I, Gabrielle Union shared her story of resilience. I mean, that mm-hmm. that's... And yeah. it's funny because as I was reading this book, I was thinking, okay, I feel like I can end the year now. You know, it, 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 the, the book felt like kind of a culmination of just share your truth. You know, well, it's not about everyone's truth matching. It's just about everyone's truth being honest. Yeah. And I, I just really like this book to me. I, I think if it was like, go forth and share your truth. And that's kind of the, the spirit I'm taking into 2018. That's wonderful. That's outstanding. All right. Well, that's a great way to end the show. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.